everyone, Brady from TextureLabs.org here. In this video, we're gonna check out a nice little setup in Adobe After Effects to create this moody cinematic text effect. A whole lot of my professional work has been in creating graphics for movie trailers, an environment where you're exploring a lot of different options. It's a very fast turnaround, so it can be a real advantage to have a couple of fast and effective tricks up your sleeve. This is a setup I'm almost hesitant to share. I've used it more times than you wanna know. All these looks are basically variations on the same project that we're about to build. It's gonna be easily adjustable, all in one comp using just a few layers. Let's get into After Effects and get started. All right, I'm getting started here with a pretty basic composition. I'm working at HD resolution, 24 frames per second, and I've got just this one text layer. So what we'll do first is build just kind of a nice straightforward beveled metal text effect. This font is called Architect. It's got a nice old fashioned vibe to it, but let's introduce just one effect to roughen up the edges a little bit. I'm gonna use the Turbulent Displace effect pretty much all the default settings but i'll bring the size down to just three and the amount down to about 20 just making it a little bit more organic then let's give it some texture and there are some really great ways to procedurally generate textures but i'm a big fan of just using real imagery where i can no big surprise if you guys know the whole texture labs project this texture i believe was the side of a tank at this military museum i went to shoot some images at there are now about 1500 high-res textures at texturelabs.org representing about 10 years of shooting stuff initially for my own work but now it's all online to use for free made possible by my good friends who have supported the project on Patreon. So as always, a huge thank you to the Patreon community. And all we need to do here is put this texture underneath the type layer and use the type as an alpha mat. Then to give this a little bit of dimension, it's gonna be pretty lo-fi. I'm just gonna use a layer style, which I can get to with a right click and here in layer styles, bevel and emboss. And we'll dial in the settings a little bit. I'm gonna change the technique to chisel hard, bring the depth up to 200%. And I like the look of the highlight a little bit more if it's set to color dodge. And while we're here, we may as well give this a little bit of life, a little bit of animation. What I'm gonna do is just keyframe the light angle so that over the course of these 120 frames, it goes from being lit from the left at say 140 degrees, I'll set a key here, to being lit from the right at zero degrees at the end of the timeline. A little odd that the light rotates in a counterclockwise direction as you go up, but I guess maybe that's more correct from a mathematical perspective. Anyways, the animation on the light angle is pretty subtle, but sometimes it's these subtle things that can help to add up for an overall effect. Okay, so the bevel and emboss kind of flat, not a whole lot of options here. Generally with a bevel and emboss, I like to add one more layer style effect just to give it a little bit of smoother shading. I think putting the inner shadow effect on here as well can help a little bit. And on the inner shadow, I'm gonna bring the opacity up to 100% and take the distance to zero, then bring the size up to, let's say about 25. Then I'm gonna do a couple quick things just to give it some color treatment. First of all, I wanna make the whole thing quite a bit darker. I'll use the levels effect and bring the white output value down below the halfway point and drag the gamma up to really bring out the shadows. We'll make this kind of dark and moody. Then to give the whole thing a little bit of overall color, I'll use the tritone effect. I'm gonna make the midtone kind of a muted blue color and then bring the opacity of this effect down to 50%, just giving the whole thing a little bit of this monochromatic blue color cast. All right, so right here, we're pretty much finished with this base layer, ready to move on to part two, which is all about building this animated highlight. And this highlight effect is not gonna use the bevel and emboss layer style. We're gonna do this on a whole different layer with a different approach. So what I need is a copy of the text layer. I'll duplicate that with Command and Control D, and of course, turn on the visibility. And let's rename this one, we'll call it Edge Light. Now, it doesn't actually matter what color the text is, the effect is gonna completely replace the color, but it is much easier to get started with something other than white, just to be able to see what's happening. So I'll make this text kind of a dark red color. And there's one effect we're really gonna lean on here to create this highlight. It's the CC plastic effect. So right out of the gate, it's kind of a bevelly dimensional effect. It looks a little smooth and plasticky, of course, and it's got a lot of settings, especially here in the shading section. It's actually got a lot of stuff that we don't need. In fact, if I zoom way in here, the only thing I really wanna pull out of this effect is this nicely rendered highlight that it can create. So first of all, let's crank the light intensity up from 100 to 200, and just get a more distinct effect. 
and it's making this smoothly beveled shape. And the first thing I want to do is see if I can get the shape of the bevel to match the bevel and emboss down here a little bit more closely. And it's these first two settings that control the overall contours it's trying to create. They sort of work in tandem with each other, but generally bringing both of these settings down will start to sharpen up the shape, make it a little bit less blobby. And it's generally a matter of experimenting a little bit, but I think here with the softness at 10 and the height at eight, it's looking like about the right shape. All right, then at this point, we're gonna get rid of a bunch of the extra lighting here that we don't need. So in the shading section, I'm gonna bring the ambient to zero, the diffuse to zero, dust to zero, and metallic to zero, leaving us just this white highlight on black using these specular and roughness settings. How intense the highlight is gonna be is controlled by just these two values. Specular is just directly how bright this is, and the roughness is kind of how sharp the highlight is. Roughness is measured in these tiny values, but I'm gonna take it from 0 0.025 up to 0 0.05. And for now, actually, I'm gonna make the background in this comp gray just so we can see it a little bit more clearly. There is one more setting I need to change. I'm gonna bring the light height down to zero. That makes it so it'll only ever create this highlight on the bevel and you don't get that reflected light point on the faces of the letters. But I've got this beveled highlight and I can rotate the light direction. By default, it's kind of this universal light coming in from a single direction, basically the same as the bevel and emboss layer style. But check out how much more interesting things get if we switch the light type from distant light to point light. As soon as it switches over to point light, we get this little light position marker. And if I drag that around, there's something really natural about the way that gives you lighting from a real point in space rather than that universal distant light. Even if I hide the layer controls and just move this point around, it's really cool how your eye can infer that there's this moving light source. Such a simple thing, but it kind of gives you a sense of scale and feels more like the light exists in a real space. So let's add some keyframes on this light position. And I'm just gonna kind of eyeball what a good trajectory might be for it. So maybe it'll start way up here and then we'll go out to frame 100 and make it land somewhere over here on the other side, a little bit closer to the type. So that's gonna look something like that. And I'll switch the layer over to screen mode for a second to get a sense of how it's gonna interact with the beveled type. You can see it really does start to bring some life to it, but I'm gonna switch it back to normal mode because first I wanna work on making this highlight a little bit more cinematic. I wanna add some glow effects and some color tones to it. Now it's gonna make that whole process a lot easier if I just take this whole layer and composite it against black. So I'm gonna use the solid composite effect to create a black background. Since the layer is gonna be set to screen mode anyways, this black will eventually be transparent, but sometimes when you're combining multiple effects and making things glow, that alpha channel can just muddy things up. So the first thing I wanna do here is make this highlight a little bit more irregular. I'm gonna use the fractal noise effect and I'll take the contrast way up to 300, then bring the brightness up a bit to 25, and in the transform section, bring the scale down to 25. And then finally, I'm gonna set the blending mode just for this effect to multiply. So that kind of multiplies in a little bit of noise and gives us a little bit of roughness in that edge. All right, then let's give it some glow, just the easy way with the glow effect, but I'll crank it up a little bit by bringing the threshold down to 20% and the glow radius up to 25. So that's kind of a small glow, but we'll give it a large glow too. So I'm gonna duplicate that effect with Command and Control D. And on this one, I'll bring the size up to 125. And that also means the intensity needs to come up. So I'll take that from one to two. Then I can always switch this over to screen mode and see how it's working against the type. In fact, I'm gonna leave it set to screen mode to get some color in here. And I'm gonna again use the tritone effect for that and find a nice looking kind of magic blue for the midtones here. All right, so that's basically the highlight effect, but I wanna show you guys one more thing that makes a really, really cool detail. I'm gonna switch it back over to normal blending mode, and what I'm gonna do is add an effect in here, the CC light rays effect. And maybe it's just me, but I've never really understood how this effect is meant to be used. Seems like a very early, unsuccessful attempt to do something like trap code shine or light burst, because it doesn't actually create light rays, it just makes one little warped ray wherever you place it. But we can actually use what are maybe the short shortcomings of this effect to create some targeted little lens flares along the path of this highlight. So first I'm gonna drag this effect up in the stack here so that it happens before the glow and the tritone so it'll get some of that color treatment applied to it. 
then I'm gonna place the effect somewhere along the path of the highlight, somewhere where the light kind of travels over it. Then I'll bring the size or the radius of the light ray down from 40 to maybe eight. And check that out. When the highlight travels over it, we get this little flare that happens, kind of like a little light bloom landmine that gets triggered whenever the light hits that specific spot. So as a matter of fact, I'm gonna put a few of these in here. I'm gonna duplicate this effect, then find another spot where it'll get lit up maybe a little bit later in the timeline and maybe create even one more. And this one will light up kind of toward the end of the timeline. So let's take a look at that. Kind of a subtle effect, but I think it's a nice little movie magic detail. I also like how it kind of helps guide your eye across the frame. All right, let's switch the layer back over to screen mode and see how this is looking. And I would say it's definitely elevating that bevel and emboss effect. It feels more like a living, breathing thing with this highlight. And now that we have this plastic highlight effect built out on this layer, it can actually be kind of cool to create more than one of these. I can just duplicate this layer and now I've got another highlight that I can maybe animate in a different direction. Or sometimes it's nice just to have a little bit of a subtle backlight effect that just kind of lives there. So what I'll do is rename this layer to backlight and let me solo this layer out. And on this copy, I'm gonna edit the effects and just simplify things. I'm gonna get rid of the little light rays, lens flare bits. Maybe we'll bring the tritone opacity down to 50% so it's not quite so saturated. And then in the CC plastic effect, I'm going to bring the height down to just five instead of eight. So it makes this very thin edge. And on this one, I'm actually going to switch the light type back to distant light so I can get kind of just an even backlighting across the whole thing. Then just like the bevel and emboss, maybe we'll animate the light angle here just to drift a little bit. So maybe it can start at about 230 degrees. I'll set a key here and then it can travel just a little bit to 290 degrees. All right, let's turn everything back on. And that does make a nice little addition to the lighting. Okay, so we've got our text, we've got it all lit up. Let's create a nice little transition in on this thing using just the effects we already have on these layers. And I think it makes a nice dramatic intro when you get this highlight first and then the body of the text kind of appears second. So on this bottom layer, remember I've got this levels effect on here. Let's set some keyframes on the levels effect to make it kind of fade up. Maybe when we get out here to about frame 60 is when it's completely lit up. So I'll set a keyframe on the histogram here then at the beginning, I'm gonna make the fade in not even start for the first 10 frames. So here at frame 10, I'm gonna change the histogram to set a key and I'm gonna drag the gamma way up to really kind of bring up those darker shadows and blacks and then also drag the white output down. So it's basically so dark that it disappears. Then I'm gonna select these keyframes, right click and easy ease both of those. And that is looking like a nice subtle fade up. Then on these other two layers, the edge highlight layers, we gotta figure out how to start these and lighting effects are definitely not something you wanna fade in. They end up going kind of gray and it can look sort of fake. So we gotta figure out how to make this light appear from nowhere. Let's solo out kind of the primary edge light layer here. And what we can do is mess with some of these CC plastic settings to create a more natural transition up from black. So maybe out here at about frame 50, we can set some keys for where we want it to end up. And what I'm gonna keyframe are two things. First, the roughness setting in the shadow settings on this effect. I'll set a key on the roughness here. And then at the beginning of the timeline, you might remember roughness is basically how large the specular highlight is. So if we bring this down as far as it'll go, it won't go to zero, but all the way at the bottom, we'll get just these little pins of light. And then there's one more thing we can animate here to make sure this goes all the way to black at the beginning of the timeline. And that's the height property, not the light height, but the actual height of the bevel. So out here at frame 50, I'll set a key on the height property. And then at the beginning of the timeline where we have these little pins of light, I could just bring the height down. It doesn't even need to go to zero, just at a height of four, all that light basically disappears. And let's take a look at that. Cool, okay, then on this backlight layer, now this is such a subtle effect, I'm actually gonna go against what I said just a minute ago. I think on this one, we can afford to just fade it in. So let's set some keyframes on the opacity here, make it fade from 0% opacity up to 100 over those first 50 frames. Although what I'm gonna do is match the timing of this fade up to the way that the bevel and emboss layer fades up on the bottom. So it'll start at frame 10 and then be all the way faded up at frame 60. 
All right, then with all three of those layers together, that is the foundation of the effect. Now, when I'm trying to get a finished look and want everything to feel kind of glued together and a little bit more expensive, just like a piece of raw footage, I'm almost always gonna to wanna to do some final color treatment or effects on top of everything, which can actually go a long way. So I'm just gonna put one adjustment layer on top and call it overall effects. And first of all, this is just gonna be the biggest cheat. I'm gonna use the transform effect to give it just a little bit of a drift. So I'll start with the scale at 100% and end with it at 105%. Pretty low budge, but for a subtle drift like this, I don't think anyone's ever gonna know. All right, then I usually like to add a little bit of a film grain look to it. You guys might've seen me use this a lot already, but it's basically my go-to settings for some graininess using the noise effect set pretty low. We'll just go to 3%. Then a Gaussian blur effect to mush it all together with a value at about 1.5. And then the unsharp mask effect to sharpen it right back up again. I'll bring the amount up to 100. And finally, an effect for some overall color correction, the Lumetri color effect. And I won't go crazy with all the graphs and color wheels and whatnot in here. It's a nice effect just to kind of push the contrast a little bit, maybe change the color temperature. We can bring up the exposure, basically just kind of dial things in here. All right, and with all those effects together on this adjustment layer, it does give the whole thing a little bit more of a finalized look. Let's get a preview going here. And that is the whole thing. So really a pretty simple setup overall. And I'm a big fan of being able to get something like this piece together and then still having the flexibility to change fonts and swap out textures. It's pretty easy to shift things around here and get completely different looks going. Here's a font that looks pretty crazy. It's the same setup. It's just a font with a lot of tiny details. All right, well, I hope you'll have fun experimenting with this. By the way, I will make this project file available to Texture Labs Patreon supporters. That was a lot of the way I learned After Effects was just looking through the project files of some of the senior artists I had a chance to work with. Either way, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.